In this video, I'm going to show you how to write inequalities using interval notation. So here we've got some inequalities, and we want to express these inequalities using interval notation. Interval notation is just a convenient way of describing an interval on the real line, and the notation is such that it suggests what the interval actually looks like in terms of open and closed circles. But we'll get into the details through some examples. So the first inequality that we'll look at is x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 3. And that's just this segment on the real line, closed circles at 1 and at 3 because x can be equal to 1 and can be equal to 3. So how we write this in interval notation is that we start out by writing down the endpoints of the segment. The segment, the left endpoint is 1, so let's write down 1, and then comma, the right endpoint is 3, so comma 3. Okay. And now we represent the closed circles by brackets in interval notation. So we put a bracket on the one and a bracket on the three. Great, so now we've got an interval that represents this segment here. But the original inequality also said that x is greater than or equal to one and less than or equal to three. So the original inequality was saying that x is in this segment and right now the interval is just a statement of this segment. It doesn't say anything about x. So how should we say that x is inside of this interval? The way we do this is we think of the interval as a set. A set is just a collection of objects. Um, and so we'll say that x is an element of the set, meaning x is one of the objects in the set. The way we write that down is we say x is an element, that uh, e, e symbol here, x is an element of this set here. Now, this notation might be a bit unfamiliar, so let's provide a few concrete examples. Um, so first of all, 2 is an element of that interval, 1 to 3. It's an element of that set of numbers um, that's greater than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 3. Um, 2 is in that set. Um, likewise, 1.5 is also in that set, because 1.5 is between 1 and 3. Um, Square root 2 even. They don't all have to be rational numbers or nice numbers. It can be an irrational number like square root 2. And square root 2 is between um, 1 and 3, so it is in that set, um, that, that interval. And, um, okay, let's, let's do an example that's not in that set. How about 3.1? 3.1 is bigger than 3, um, so it doesn't satisfy the property that's needed to be in the set. It's, it's not an element of the set. So 3.1 is not in the interval 1 to 3. And so you'll notice I've been talking about um, this as an interval and a set, and we'll use the phrase set and interval interchangeably throughout the video. So when we say set, you can think of this as simply an interval. Actually, a set is a more general mathematical construct, which you'll learn more about as you advance. But for now, just think of it as an interval. Okay, so just to recap this first example, um, we're saying that x is an element of that set 1 to 3, so x could be 2, x could be 1.5, x could be square root 2, really x could be any number that is greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 3, any number in that segment here. Um, but x could not be, say, 3.1, because 3.1 is bigger than 3, so it's, it's not in the segment. Okay, so now that we understand the idea of x being an element of the interval, let's go ahead and continue with the rest of the examples. So x is greater than 1 and less than 3. Strictly greater than, strictly less than, so open circles. Um, x cannot be equal to 1, cannot be equal to 3, but it's everything in between. So how to write this in interval notation? It's going to be similar to last time, so we're going to have the endpoints 1 and 3 still. But now since we have open circles, since we have strict greater than, strict less than, we're going to use parentheses instead of brackets. So, so brackets matches with closed circle, parentheses matches with open circle. And again, to say that x is in this interval here, to say that x is in that segment that, that goes from 1 to 3 but does not touch 1 and 3, then we'll just say x is an element of that interval. Great, so, so that's just the interval notation for that inequality. And moving on to the next one here. In this inequality, we have some mixed notation. We've got a greater than or equal to, and we've also got a strictly less than. So this is a segment with um, the endpoint at one is a closed circle, and the endpoint at three is an open circle. So again, we're going to just write our endpoints, one and three. 
and we'll match up bracket goes with closed circle and parenthesis goes with open circle. So closed circle on one, so we put a bracket there, and open circle on three, so that gets a parenthesis. And again, to say that x is in this interval, we just write x is an element of that interval. Now the next one is pretty similar. Now we just have um, one is an open circle now and three is the closed circle. So just kind of switched up from last time. So again, um, endpoints are one and three. Um, this time one is open circle. So that goes with parenthesis. So parenthesis on one and three is closed circle. So that gets a bracket, bracket on three because three is a closed circle. And to say that X is in this interval, we just say X is an element of that interval. And there we have it, we're done. The next example is pretty similar to the previous one, except now we're going in the reverse direction. We want to convert the intervals to inequality notation and sketch them on the number line. So, so now we're starting with intervals and we want to get the inequality and sketch it on the number line. Um, so, okay. So first of all, X is in the interval um, uh, from two to five with, with brackets on them. So let's, uh, why don't we start by sketching this on the number line. So brackets are like closed circles. So closed circle around two, and then also a closed circle around five. And we want everything in between. So let's shade in in between here. Okay, so now to, to write the inequality for this, um, we have X in the middle and X has to be greater than or equal to the left endpoint and less than or equal to the right endpoint. Um, so you can also think of brackets as like greater than or equal to, um, and so you can also think of brackets as like um, greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. So, okay, so let's, let's write down the endpoints. Left endpoint is two and the right endpoint is five. So there we go, that is our inequality. Okay, so how about this next one? X is an element of the interval from zero to four with parentheses. So remember parentheses correspond to open circles. So open circle around zero and open circle around four. So here we have this, this interval here between zero and four, and let's write down the inequality notation. Okay, so inequality notation, again, X is between the two endpoints. Um, but this time equality is not allowed because uh, parentheses are like um, just no equality, just, just greater than or less than, not equal to. So X is greater than the left endpoint, X is greater than zero, and X is less than the right endpoint. So X is, X is less than four. There we go. Okay, now a mixed interval here. We've got a bracket and then a parenthesis. So first of all, left endpoint at negative three so bracket means closed circle. So closed circle here. And then um, for, for one, that's our right endpoint and that has a parenthesis. So that means open circle. So open circle here. So that interval is this on the number line. And to write the inequality that X is in this interval, um, we just say X is between the endpoints with the appropriate inequality signs. So the left endpoint is negative three and X is greater than or equal to negative three, can be equal to that. And now for the right endpoint, right endpoint is one and X is less than one and not equal to one because open circle uh, parenthesis, no equality allowed. So, so there's our inequality notation. Lastly, we've got another example of mixed parentheses and brackets. Um, let's, let's go ahead and, and write down the endpoints. So endpoint at negative one here and that's a parenthesis, so open circle, and another endpoint at two. So that is, um, well, that's a bracket, so closed circle. So X is in this segment here. And we can write that in inequality notation by saying X is between the two endpoints. First endpoint, open circle, so X has to be um, greater than that, and that endpoint is negative one. And the next endpoint on the, on the right here, um, that's a closed circle, so X is less than or equal to that, and that endpoint is two. So there we go. Um, there is our inequality for that interval.
Lastly, here are some examples of uh, inequalities um, with, with no upper bound or, or no lower bound in the bottom case. But let's, let's worry about the top rows here. So no upper bound on this inequality. How do we write this in interval notation? Um, so why don't we why don't we just start it off um, using this this uh, endpoint at two? We know endpoint at two. Um, that's an open circle. So that is uh, that is a parenthesis. So so two, like that. And then what do we do on the right though? Um, we don't have an endpoint on the right really that we can see. But what's what's done here is we think of it as going to infinity. Think about like an endpoint infinity. Infinity isn't like a concrete number, but it's going towards the direction of infinity. So let's write down infinity as the right endpoint. And now because x because um, a number can never attain the value of infinity, can only approach it. Um, this is going to be uh, a parenthesis, not equal to infinity, because numbers are 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 finite, and we can only approach infinity. So there we go, parentheses. So there, there's the interval notation for this ray on the number line. And now we want to say that x is in this ray. So we say that x is in this set. x is an element of that set of real numbers going from 2 to infinity, um, not including 2. OK, next example, x is greater than or equal to 2. And that's a really similar idea. So we're starting out with our endpoint 2 again. And this time we have a closed circle, because greater than or equal to. Um, equal to is allowed. So now the equal to pairs with a bracket. Brackets represent closed circles. And now we again, we think of it as going to infinity on the right hand side, um, but never actually attaining the value of in infinity, just approaching it. So parenthesis around that because not equal to infinity. Okay, so that's that's the interval notation of this ray here. And we want to say that x is in this ray. So you say x is an element of that set represented by the interval. Now, how about the inequality x is less than 3? So, so now we're going the opposite way. We're starting at 3 and we're going to the left. So this time we know the right endpoint, but we don't know the left endpoint. So why don't we start it off like we did earlier, we know that 3 is one of the endpoints, that's the right endpoint, and that's an open circle, not equal to, so that's a parenthesis. And how about the left endpoint? Well, earlier we were saying that we can think about when it's going all the way to the right, that's like it's going to infinity, and to the left is, is the negative direction, so we can think about this as going to negative infinity. And negative infinity is then what we use as our left endpoint. But again, because x is just a number and numbers are finite, they can only approach infinity, um, we're going to put a parenthesis there because not equal to infinity, just approaching infinity. Okay, so there's the interval notation of that ray there. And we want to say that x is in that ray. So x is an element of that set represented by the interval notation. Okay, so last example. Example is x is less than or equal to 30. And again, that's pretty similar to the previous one. And we had a similar situation here. All that changes really is now there is a bracket around the 3. So 3 is the right endpoint. It's got a bracket because there is a, there is a closed circle. There is equality allowed. And the left, um, the left endpoint we think of as negative infinity, like, like before. So the so left endpoint is negative infinity. And again, we can't attain negative infinity, only approach it. So we get a parenthesis, because um, not equal to negative infinity. OK, so now this is the interval notation for that ray. And to say that x is in that ray, we want to say that x is an element of that set represented by the interval. So now that we know how to convert between inequalities and intervals, in the future we will learn about some operations with intervals, such as union and intersection.